everybody, Dr. R here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the vascular system. And so it's kind of gonna be a mix of a few different things. When we're talking about cardiology, a lot of times we're talking about the cardiovascular system. And even though this chapter is cardiology, we still want to kind of integrate the vascular system uh, and some of the high yield topics associated with it. So we're gonna talk about the aorta, some of its branches, and then we'll transition that into subclavian steel syndrome, We'll look at different types of venous obstructions, just some quick things to be familiar with, um, some very basic concepts uh, with coronary bypass grafting. We'll talk about the femoral nerve, artery, vein, and lymphatics, and then we'll talk about the inferior vena cava. So just to kind of start things off, let's start by talking about the aorta, and let's just review some basic you know, kind of anatomy. And so this very first structure you see here looking at the aorta coming from the left ventricle, right? So the first part of the aorta is going to be the ascending aorta. Okay, so that's that first structure that you see there. Now the next portion up here is going to be the aortic arch. And at the aortic arch, there's something that's particularly important to remember. So remember on the right side, on the arterial side, we have the brachiocephalic artery. Okay, that's gonna be this artery here. On the left side though, we don't have a brachiocephalic artery. We simply have our common carotid artery going up, and then we have our left subclavian artery. So we still will have a right common carotid and a right subclavian. It's just that they're going to originate off of the brachiocephalic trunk, okay? And so you can see them here. Here's gonna be the right common carotid, and here's going to be the right subclavian artery. Now, the next portion of the aorta here is gonna be the descending aorta. And one you know, area in here that sometimes comes up is going to be the aortic isthmus. So I'm just kind of blowing up the location that, that we have here in a uh, circle. So here would be our left common carotid artery, okay, and then next to that, we would have our left subclavian artery. And from the left subclavian artery, we'll start to form the descending aorta. Now there is another structure here, and that's gonna be the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, so the ligamentum arteriosum is going to connect the aorta to the pulmonary artery. Okay, and remember the embryologic remnant of the ligamentum arteriosum is going to be the ductus arteriosus, which is what, something we've kind of already talked about a little bit already. And remember, we can keep the ductus arteriosus open if we were to give a newborn prostaglandins, for example. So if they had, you know, uh, parallel circuits like we see with transposition of great vessels, that would be a situation where we would want to keep the ductus arteriosus patent. Okay, so for certain cyanetic congenital heart defects, you know, we might want to keep this open. But in general, in adults, this is going to be closed. And as it's closed, it's going to be known as the ligamentum arteriosum. The area between the ligamentum arteriosum and the left subclavian artery, okay? So this area in between the two, this is gonna be the aortic isthmus, okay? So these are structures we'll talk a little bit more about when we talk about dissections and uh, aneurysms, but just something to kind of be familiar with, okay? And um, if we go a little bit further down, down the aorta, so now we're going from the descending aorta into the abdominal aorta, and the location where this transition happens is right here at the diaphragm. When the aorta crosses the diaphragm, it turns into the abdominal aorta. So the aorta above here is gonna be descending, the aorta down here is gonna be the abdominal aorta. And you can see that here, this is gonna be at the location of T12, where the descending aorta traverses the diaphragm via the aortic hiatus and then becomes the abdominal aorta. Some other high yield structures just for memorization purposes here, T12 is where we're gonna have the branches of the celiac trunk and L1 is going to be the uh, origin of the superior mesenteric artery. Okay, so this is kind of just going through your GI blood supply here. And uh, L3 will be for the inferior mesenteric artery. And then in between the superior uh, mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery, we have two structures. We have the renal arteries right at about L1 and L2. We'll talk about more uh, of that in a future video, but then we also have the gonadal arteries coming off at L2. And the other last thing on here that I would remember is that at L4, the aorta bifurcates into two common iliac arteries. Okay, so this happens at L4, and so sometimes people will remember this, this bifurcation by writing bifurcation. Okay, so that's one way that people can try to remember that this happens at L4, the aorta splits. You know, say this is your chest wall. Okay, so here's my chest wall. 
and you know I have my heart okay and you know this area here the posterior heart that's going to be the location of the left atrium okay now if I make another layer what's behind the left atrium behind the left atrium is going to be my esophagus so we'll just write ESO for esophagus and then what's behind the esophagus one of the major structures behind the esophagus is going to be the descending aorta okay so I have my chest wall I have my heart right and there's other you know other small layers but the point is if I take an ultrasound probe okay I have an ultrasound probe here and I'm trying to you know look at the heart using the ultrasound probe against the chest I'm really not going to get a good view of the left atrium and of the aorta because I have a lot of structures that I need to get through a lot of different chambers in the heart right and there's going to be tissue in here okay so if I do a transthoracic ultrasound a TTE transthoracic echocardiogram it's not going to give me great visualization of the mitral valve of the left atrium or of the aorta however if I take that ultrasound probe and we do a TEE a transesophageal ultrasound I can take that probe and I can look at the aorta much more clearly because I'm up against the aorta or I can look at the left atrium because I'm also up against the left atrium and I can get better visualization of the mitral valve if I'm concerned for rheumatic heart disease or the aorta if we're concerned about dissection or an aneurysm okay so this would be the TEE -E. okay so I just wanted to clear that up because that's a, a big point of confusion between these two different echocardiograms